Yes, let me take leave. Thank you. <coughs> yes. Very good evening, my children. How are you? Yesterday, we have completed successfully in the first part of the present lesson. Let me move for the second part of the present lesson. I hope you are all safe. You see, the lesson which we are continuing, the making of independent India's constitution part two. That's where we are continuing. You see, let me recapitulate at once what we learned yesterday. <clears throat> you see, uh, revising Indian constitution. So under this section, Nepal constitution, just we have remembered about the Nepal constitution and Japan constitution, background of Nepal. Then second point, which we learned, reading debates, the making of Indian constitution. Then the third one is reading constituent assembly debates. So under these debates, what is parliamentary system and what is federal system, yesterday we learned. So today we are going to discuss about part two, that is, these are the concepts we are going to learning. Those are example of critiquing in constituent assembly debates, example of debates on fundamental rights, constitution and social engineering, then finally the constitution today. So these are the concepts we are going to learning today. Be ready, my dear children. You see, basic principles of Indian constitution. Yesterday, we discussed all of this. Just only for remembering purpose. Uh, let me discuss. Popular sovereignty. Oh, yes, yesterday, uh, I have given a definition to the sovereignty. What is socialism, secularism, fundamental rights, Directive principles of state policy, judicial independency, and federalism. These are the things we have discussed yesterday. Now you listen the words for whom these are. Our difficulty, as I said, is not about the ultimate future. <clears throat> Our difficulty is how to make Allah the heterogeneous he? mess that we have today take a decision. Identify in who is him. And march in a cooperative way <clears throat> on that road which is bound to lead us to unity. Yes, dear Our friends. Now you heard the words of Dr. B.R. Ambedkar. Those are the real words of Dr. B.R. Ambedkar. We are all very fortunate because that record has available and we heard the real words and the real constituent assembly we have seen. You see now, looking back the work of constituent assembly, it will now be two years, 11 months and 17 days uh, taken, taken place to complete the uh, constituent assembly, to complete the writing of Indian constitution. It has taken two years, 11 months and 17 days. Well, the, when, the, when it starts, since it first met on the 9th December of 1946, from that date and the completion of work, nearly two years, 11 months and 17 days taken place. During this period, the Constituent Assembly has altogether held 11 sessions, 11 sessions. The Constituent Assembly appointed a total of 22 committees to deal with the different tasks of constituent making. You see, this is here we have to identify. The Constituent Assembly, who elected from the princely states and provinces, they are all uh, sit together and formed into 22 committees. So, uh, entire the 22 committees, Dr. Babu Rajendra Prasad is the president of Constituent Assembly. Then, the drafting committee chairman, Dr. B. R. Ambedkar, he is called as the father of the 
Indian constitution, the father of the Indian constitution. Don't forget that. Out of these eight were major committees and others were minor committees. Among these 22, eight were major committees and other were minor committees. So this is the division at the time of constituent assembly, 22 committees formed. So all these 22 committees submitted their rep report to the uh, drafting committee who he did by the Dr. B.R. Ambedkar head as a chairman. <clears throat> you see, while uh, preparing the Indian constitution, we brought some of the uh, information from various nations' constitutions, which are apt, which are suitable for our Indian atmosphere or Indian people, for the democracy of India, which are apt or which are suitable, we are uh, brought from various countries' constitutions. You see, following are the features of the constitution borrowed from different countries. You see, what are those? From United States, <clears throat> what are the concepts we have brought up here? Uh, we have incorporated in our Indian constitution. You see, written constitution, it, it, this is the concept we have brought from United States. Executive head of states known as president and he is being the supreme commander of the armed forces. You see, the president is the supreme. Uh, the, this is the uh, you see, this is the principle we have brought up from United States of America. Vice president, as the ex officio as the chairman of the Rajya Sabha. So, vice president is conducting conducting the Rajya Sabha meetings. Then, fundamental rights, Supreme Court, provision of states, independency of judiciary and judicial review, preamble, removal of Supreme Court and High Court judges. So, these are all the concepts we brought from the United States of America. And also, we brought some of the concepts from USSR. You see, the fundamental duties and also five-year plan. Recently, um, uh, our uh, uh, Modi government introduced uh, in the place of a five-year plan, he introduced another program, but up to arrival of Modi, a five-year plan um, executed in India very successfully. Under this plan, a large number of activities taken place. Then, from Australia, we took concurrent list. Yesterday, we discussed central list, state list, and concurrent list. So, this concurrent list we brought from the Constitution of Australia, and also the language of the preamble, preamble, Already I told you yesterday, the preamble means it is a gist of the constitution, it is a gist or it is the uh, essence of the constitution. Uh, what are the concepts covered in the, const in the constitution? We may learn by going through the preamble. <clears throat> From Japan, laws on which the Supreme Court functions, how the Supreme Court functions. From Weimar constitution of Germany. Germany. So uh, we took from Germany suspension of fundamental rights during the emergency. You see, India is also um, experienced during the um, Indira Gandhi period. We experienced the emergency and its effects. What is the influence of emergency? So at the time, uh, the fundamental rights are suspended. Uh, it, we, it is taken from Germany constitution. From Canada, you see, scheme of federation with a strong center. That means state and central relationship it proves. Distribution of powers between the center and states. Uh, we already stated concurrent list. And placing residuary powers with the center. Then from Ireland, the concept of direct two principles of state policy. Then method of election of president. Nomination of members in the Rajya Sabha by the president. Then features borrowed from United Kingdom. Nominal head, the president, like Queen of England. The Queen of England, what the powers vested, the same powers vested in Indian president also. The cabinet system of ministers, post of prime minister, parliamentary type of government. Basical Parliament, Bicameral Parliament, 
lower house more powerful council of ministers responsibility lower house to lower house speaker in lok sabha so these are all the helping concepts for us uh, these are the, these are all the helping principles for us that is why we undertake from those constituencies are incorporated in our indian constituency because uh, we are also democratic nation these are all uh, suitable for us that is why by studying all the uh, different kinds of nations constituencies dr b r ambedkar incorporated all those in our indian constitution you see example of critiquing in constituents debates you see actually indian constitution is a bulky one it's a bigger than other nations con uh, <clears throat> constituencies even though there are some criticism on our indian uh, constituency in indian constituencies you see let we examine let we go through at once who criticized on what you see here the maulana hazrat mohani the maulana hazrat this is the book of indian constitution it seems to be like this so on this constitution the maulana hazrat mohani has criticized say criticized that constitution is merely a copy of the 1935 act see the 1935 act a uh, british council india act this is this, this act is framed for the welfare of indians by the british government you see maybe the most of the principles are suitable for the indian democracy that is why they framed during 1935 so that is why the framers of indian constituency uh, brought up these principles of course he criticized it is nothing but the indian constitution is nothing but a copy of 1935 act who criticized like that maulana hazrat mohani then you see the both are sitting together here maulana hazrat hazari and dr b r ambedkar sit together and discussing something you now this is that is the portrait the power should be decentralized the power should be decentralized this is the criticism by damodar swarup seth what the suggestion of damodar swarup seth what he criticized the power should be decentralized that means what he observed in the constitution itself the power is not a decentralized according to him it may be the unitary unitary power most of the powers are vested in the hands of central government according to damodar swarup seth he is a one of the socialist um, activate I mean, yes then criticized that ignore the centrality of the villages ignore the centrality of the villages you see gandhi proposed villages are the backbone of india villages are the backbone of india the power should be reached up to the villages uh, the decentralization of the power goes to up to the villages that means so the powers according to damodar swarup seth the most of the powers are vested in the hands of central government that is his criticism so likewise some of the members are criticized if you go through the textbook you may learn some more okay lack of time i am unable to uh, explain in detail my dear students you try to understand the position because we are conducting online lessons not to waste the uh, holidays uh, corona holidays that is why we are we, our uh, organization extending our support to uh, give uh, to utilize the time based on the possibility you see example of debate on fundamental rights very thoroughly our constituent assembly members they discussed and accepted these are all the fundamental rights right to equality this is the fundamental right for each and every citizen of the india must have the equality no discrimination should be there and right to freedom we can move entire india wherever it is without uh, any visa and any other permissions right against the exploitation 
exploitation during the British period and during the period of kings. Uh, the people are exploited in different ways. So that should be arrested because we are all in the independent India. So this must be arrested. Our right against exploitation. Right to freedom of religion. Already yesterday I told India is a secular country. So whatever the religion you are, you may uh, choose another religion or you may move. But you have no right to criticize other religions, but you can adopt based on your interest. Cultural and educational rights and right to constitutional remedies and right to education. So these are all the fundamental rights which we are enjoying at present. Wherever, the <clears throat> wherever you feel difficulty to enjoy all this, you may directly approach to the court to get back. The right to equality includes equality before the law, the prohibition of discrimination on grounds of religion, race, caste, gender, or place of birth, equality of opportunity, and matters of employment, the abolition of untouchability, and abolition of title. So this is the right of equality. So all these must have um, treat equally. Okay, then the right to freedom includes freedom of speech and freedom of expression. Then right against exploitation prohibits all forms of forced labor, forced labor, child labor, and trafficking of human beings, children under age of 14 years, 14 are not allowed to work. So this we call as uh, <clears throat> child labor, child labor. Uh, below the 14 years children, whoever attending the works in the, whether it is factories or whether it is cultivating lands, wherever it may be, below the 14 years children must in the school. They do not in the workplace. If the government will observe the child is doing bonded labor, they may be punished. The, the, the person who enjoying the children, they may be punished. So that is forced labor not allowed. Uh, Again, stuff exploitation. Okay, then the right to freedom. Religion includes freedom of conscience and free profession, practice, and propagation of religion. Freedom to manage religious affairs. So these are all comes under this. Then the cultural and educational rights preserve the right of any section of citizen to conserve their cultural language or script and right of minorities to establish and administer educational institutions of other of their choice so this under this uh, fundamental right they the more the under the private organization there are so many schools were established as well as uh, public administration under public administration the government is establishing schools and private administration the private persons are establishing and they are also providing education so this is cultural and educational rights. It is one of the fundamental rights which we want to enjoy. Then the right to constitutional remedies is present for enforcement of fundamental rights. Then Article 21A right to education states that state all shall provide free and compulsory education to all children at the age of 6 to 14 years. Compulsory education. <clears throat> we must have understood because the constitution is providing for each and child each and every child in the nation must have get educate must have get free education compulsory education so that is why the government insisting not to engage any child in the uh, working place in the working place okay then Abide by the constitution and respect national flag and national anthem. Then follow the ideals of the freedom struggle. Protect sovereignty and integrity of India. Defend the country and render nationalism service when called upon. Spirit of commune, common brotherhood. Preserve composite culture. Preserve natural. And that means, you see, apart from the fundamental rights, we have to follow all these principles also. 
what are the principles see abide by the constitution and respect the national flag and national anthem you see whenever the whenever the flag hoisted we are all saluting it we are all saluting it we are we are all get up whenever the national anthem we heard we must have stopped there and we have we, we have to respect we have to respect uh, being a child you can observe during the prayer we are all standing and uh, singing the national anthem that is the respect we are giving them whenever the flag hoisted during the uh, during august 15th and january 26th or any other occasions we are saluting to our flag that's why we have to abide the constitution we have to respect it follow the ideals of the freedom struggle you see the most of the leaders are sacrificed their lives we have to understand their sacrifice and we have to follow the same then protect the sovereignty and the integrity of india <clears throat> being a child it is our utmost responsibility to follow the sovereignty and integrity why because india is a large number of people different kinds of communities different kinds of religions different kinds of linguists even though we must have follow the integrity it it gives a strength for us it give it develops the nationality among us okay then defend the country and render national services when called upon defend the country and render national services when called upon you see when and where the nation called the uh, people to participate in the service of nations we must be ready spirit of common brotherhood so to develop this concept during the period we are doing the pledge india is my country all indians are my brothers and sisters likewise we are doing pledge because this concept will be developed by doing that preserve the composite culture see as indians we have our own culture that must be uh, protected that must be practiced and that must be protected then preserve the natural environment you see now india is different kinds of environments but we have to protect all of those being a citizen develop scientific temper we have to question each and everything we have to question we have to develop the nature of questioning ability we have to develop the nature of questioning ability then only the scientific temper will be developed then safeguard public property that is our utmost responsibility we have to safeguard the public property like uh, buses direct transportation of the government and uh, trains whatever it may be whatever the all the governmental institutions we have to feel uh, even schools colleges these are all the property of people people is itself government okay then we have to keep up we have to safeguard strive for excellency strive for excellency we have to prove our efficiency by getting knowledge duty for all parents guardians to send their children in the age group of 6 to 14 years to school because this is the age of learning this is the age of acquiring knowledge this is the age of getting a new courses and uh, uh, by proving our efficiency in the sports and games that is why we must have utilize uh, that age and discussion on untouchability untouchability a very thoroughly discussion each and every uh, issues uh, at the time of constituent assembly while accepting the indian constitution you see untouchability is an inhuman activity an inhuman activity this is this divides the people of india into groups into groups that means you see unless we can do away with the caste system altogether there is no use tinkering with the problem of untouchability superficially mr pramod rajan thakur this is the quotation by pramod rajan thakur the caste system the indian society <clears throat> is built up on the caste system this is very unfortunate we have to uh, we we try ourselves to abolish the caste system it is an inhuman activity this is degrading we ourselves this is degrading we ourselves 
You see, some of the people are facing very critical situation. Very, uh, that is why this is not good uh, for India because India is a, India is a knowledge based India. That is why being a people of Indians, we have to uh, strive uh, to um, abolish the inhuman activity of untouchability. Then the word untouchability actually requires clarification. That means S.C. Banerjee, he raised that question. What is the real meaning of untouchability? So he raised that question. You see, this is the constant assembly. Um, the uh, preserved photo, this is one. Here, the discussions are going on. You see, the, here, the people are recording the discussions. They are recording the chairman of the constant assembly, Dr. Rajan, Babu Rajendra Prasad. And you see here, Jawaharlal Nehru sitting, standing here, how the session is going on. So this is uh, one thing Mr. Pramod, Pramod Rajan Thakur express about untouchability. Then another statement is, the word untouchability actually requires the clarification because he is unable to understanding. So that is why he sought clarification at the time of constant assembly. You see here, untouchability means any act committed in exercise of discrimination on grounds of religion, caste, or lawful vocation of life. Sri Rohini Kumar Choudhury. Sri Rohini Kumar Choudhury. This is the statement of Rohini Kumar Choudhury. What is the statement? Untouchability means any act of committed in exercise of discrimination. Discrimination. The people are discriminating. We are all Indians. See, the concept we are developing from the childhood itself by playing pledge. We are all Indians. So, that we ourselves discriminating is an inhuman activity. That is why we have to abolish the caste system and we have to prove all Indians are brothers and sisters. Okay, the same he expressed, you see, discrimination on grounds of religion, caste, or lawful vocation of life. Then, MK, Mr. K. M. Munshi, Sir, I oppose this amendment. The definition is so worried, so worded, that if it is accepted, it will make any discrimination, even on the ground of place, of birth, or caste, untouchability. So that is the statement of Mr. K. M. Munshi. You see, now you try to understand how uh, deeply the discussions are going on into each and every uh, principle framed by the constitution makers. Uh, very deeply they are discussing and they are accepting. Then only the final copy of constitution came into force. Then, Dhirendranath Datta. You see, what is his statement that we have? Untouchability will be very difficult for the judge to decide cases. Mr. Dhirendranath Datta. The definition of untouchability left to the legislature to make appropriate laws in the future. So he is asking the actual meaning of the untouchability. Untouchability will be very difficult for the judge to decide cases. So during the, uh, uh, during the arguments, whether it is in the Supreme Court or in the High Court, to define untouchability must be uh, clarified. The definition of untouchability left to the legislature to make appropriate laws in future because uh, he, he, the, his suggestion is to left it to the legislature to think, to think in more deeply and for acceptancy. Then, you see here, this graph proves since the constitution was adopted on 26th January 1950 till 2013, nearly 99 amendments were made. Already yesterday, uh, we discussed about the amendments because this is the graph in our textbook. If you go through it, you can understand very easily. My dear children, by observing this graph and by, uh, by going through the instruction 
you try to frame your own questions by observing this graph because you have to develop the questioning capacity that is one of the capabilities that that is one of the skills you have to develop during the study period during the uh, getting education you have to develop the questioning capacity so by observing the, this you may draw a table a table uh, and also you can narrate yourself maybe 5 to 10 sentences or you may frame one paragraph it it enhances your thinking ability it creates um, it proves your creativity by doing this kind of activities then constitution and social engineering engineering constitution and social engineering so this is the concept under this concept let we observe what are the uh, information the nation and a move throwing away the shell of its past and fashioning for itself jawaharlal nehru so this is the this is the uh, this is he this is the opinion of pandit jawaharlal nehru the nation and a move throwing away the shell of its past and a fashioning for itself that means let we forget about our past let we move towards the development so that is the suggestion of our first prime minister of india sri jawaharlal nehru garu you see here the constitution provides a number of special measures the constitution provides a number of special measures uh, to protect the interest of scs and sts my dear children you see a special focus uh, paid on scs and sts why because sc means scheduled castes sts means scheduled tribes especially the main focus given on these categories are these are all downtrodden communities downtrod depressed communities downtrodden communities most of the people are in these communities are in the poor they are all very poorest position so that is why the folk the provide the constitution provides a number of special measures to protect the interest of scs and sts because the constitution provides us uh, some security safe and security then you see here this is the constitution of india the book of constitution this is justice liberty equality fraternity yesterday we discussed all of this the first constitution article 315 yesterday i told you schedule c8 then we come to present articles 448 schedules 12 parts 25 amendments 104 so yesterday i told you just let we remember at once again the constitution today you see this is the parliament laws can be made with approval of legislative houses you see how our parliament is how rich how luxurious you see uh, you have to dream to sit here my dear student uh, there is a possibility if you think if you think positively there is a possibility to think even as a member of parliament or as a member of assembly you see here this is very this place is very key place to frame the laws which are helping to the poorest of the poor or to the nation to the security of safe and security of the nation this place here our representatives who elected by uh, voters who elected by the votes of people they are all coming here and they sit to, and they sit here and discussing and frame the laws which are helping for the administration laws can be made with the approval of legislative houses legislative houses um, in the central lok sabha and rajya sabha at the level of states and assemblies and councils also there amending the articles can be initiated only by the parliament amending the articles if the constitution want to be amended based on the changes taken place 
only the parliament has the power to amend the indian constitution okay you see this is the parliament bhavan this is the parliament bhavan the president of india this is the bhavan of president of india this is the rajya sabha this is the lok sabha you see here how beautifully the seats are arranged uh, here the draw mean the, the, the people who are sitting here they are uh, recording all the speeches they are recording and the chairman or the president president i mean lok sabha speaker in lok sabha rajya sabha speaker the rajya sabha mean vice president of india is uh, conducting the sessions here this is the rashtrapati bhavan okay constant amendments needs the approval of two by third of members in both the houses of parliament rajya sabha and lok sabha you see any amendment brought to the notice of uh, parliament that should be approved by two by third majority of the both houses two by third majority okay then only it, it is it, it is accepted as a amendment and it is entered into the constitution of india then you see you try to recognize who is he my dear children you see the picture who is he very easily you can remember he is nothing but the present president of india president of india see some articles some articles may be amended only with acceptancy from the state legislature some articles may be amended only with the acceptancy from the state of state legislature the president of the country also approves the new amendment you see already we told indian constituency is uh, rigid and also the flexible it is a rigid constituency that means some of the amendments are very critical to amend you see all the state assembly should be acceptable along with the parliament parliament itself means lok sabha and rajya sabha and also the rashtrapati or the president of india so uh, this is very critical so at sometimes it is very flexible only lok sabha and rajya sabha may be approved by two by third majority so that is why indian constitution is very flexible and rigid you see mr ramnath kovid mr ramnath kovid he is the present president of india earlier president pranab mukherjee has passed away recently we have to remember all of this by seeing by seeing some of the incidents you see here some of the pictures very easily you can understand who are they who who is she very um, notable person very familiar in india a very dare dare and dashing lady shrimati indira gandhi shrimati indira gandhi mr atal bihari vajpayee at once she addressed she is indian kali kali of india during the war of pakistan i hope in 1972 she very dearly um, moved uh, to get the um, victory to india so at the time mr vajpayee addressed her uh, she is the kali of india she mr shrimati indira gandhi during her period uh, emergency also came and some of the pros and cons are there during the administration of shrimati indira gandhi she is one and only lady the first prime minister of india we have to very proud she is the daughter of pandit jawahar lal nehru see major changes in the constitution were the inclusion of two words into the preamble of the constitution secular and socialist 42 amendment uh, 19, 1972 we brought we have included we have incorporated these two words secular and socialist yesterday we discussed about it these two words uh, also there in preamble okay then this is a, he is one of the remarkable persons in india maybe he is a swami ji he is a swami ji he is very popular in india by uh, his name is added in the constitution see the second major event in the life of indian constitution has been 
ಸುಪ್ರೀಂ ಕೋರ್ಟ್ ಜಡ್ಜ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಪಾಪುಲರ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ನೋನ್ ಆಸ್ ಕೇಶವಾನಂದ ಭಾರತಿ ಕೇಸ್ ಕೇಶವಾನಂದ ಭಾರತಿ ಈಸ್ ಈಸ್ ಅ ಮಿಸ್ಟರ್ ಕೇಶವಾನಂದ ಭಾರತಿ ಸ್ವಾಮೀಜಿ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಎ ಡೇಸ್ ಬ್ಯಾಕ್ ರೀಸೆಂಟ್ಲಿ ಹಿ ವಾಸ್ ಪಾಸ್ ಅವೇ ಅಂಡ್ ಎಂಟೈರ್ ಇಂಡಿಯಾ ರೆಕಗ್ನೈಸ್ಡ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಗ್ರೇಟ್ನೆಸ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಹಿ ಇಸ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಕೇರಳ ಹಿ ಇಸ್ ಒನ್ ಒನ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಕೇರಳ ಹಿ ಇಸ್ ಒನ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಚೇರ್ಮನ್ ಆಫ್ ಎ ಮಟ್ ಸೊ ದೆರ್ ಇಸ್ ಎ ಡಿಸ್ಪ್ಯೂಟ್ ಬಿಟ್ವೀನ್ ದೆರ್ ಇಸ್ ಎ ಲ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಬಿಟ್ವೀನ್ ದಿ ಗವರ್ನಮೆಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಕೇರಳ ಅಂಡ್ ಕೇಶವಾನಂದ ಭಾರತಿ ಸೊ ಹಿ ಅಪ್ರೋಚ್ ದ ಕೋರ್ಟ್ ಸೊ ಬೈ ಅಬ್ಸರ್ವಿಂಗ್ ದಿಸ್ ನಿಯರ್ಲಿ ಥರ್ಟೀನ್ ಜಡ್ಜಸ್ participated out of 16 uh, i hope 1972 or maybe 1974 and 13 judges passed their judgments among those seven are favorable to the keshavananda bharati and six were opposed but finally that bill is accepted the essence of the case the essence of the case you see role in indian constitutional law keshavananda bharati was the petitioner in kesavananda bharati state of kerala case citation air 1973 supreme court kesavananda was landmark decision of the supreme court of india that established the basic structure doctrine of the constitution you see uh, after the completion of uh, case the 13 judges revealed the basic structure of the constitution should not be amended that should be kept so that right has no even uh, uh, parliament that right has no parliament to amend the basic structure of indian constituency so that uh, that, that is came through this case that is why he is a remarkable person in the history of india keshavananda bharati okay and also some other remarkable case also there of course this is not the time to think all of those you see here keywords you observe uh, drafting committee yesterday i told the names you try to write down you try to remember yourself and write down it and show it to your teacher then constituent assembly how the constituent assembly framed yesterday i told you having the power to prepare the indian constitution preamble a preliminary statement of the constitution then concurrent list you see union list state list and concurrent list okay government of india unitary principles federal principles citizenship a person owing loyalty and entitled by the birth uh, or to the protection of a nation so these are all the keywords you try to learn it presidential system the system of government in which the power to make and execute laws is held by the president this is this type of government in us united states of america parliamentary system a system of government in which the power make and execute laws is held by the parliament our india is suitable for that you see amendment so these are all the things we have discussed i have, i have given a project work to you uh, after complete lesson is completed uh, with all your cooperation uh, now this project you have to do it and you submit this project to your social teacher of your school prepare a project on your school constitution already i told you what is meant by school constitution it means school calendar better to approach your headmaster and ask him to give the school calendar so by observing that you prepare a school constitution let we call it as a constitution of school because some of the rules and regulations are constituted in this calendar okay that is the work i have uh, i am giving you uh, you see my dear friends i really very much grateful to you uh, really thousands of children are watching it helps us very lot this is the feedback uh, for us it helping very lot to continuing our efforts uh, giving you the knowledge thank you one and all be safe and be secure do please wear the masks while go- going out because you want to be safe okay Thank you one and all. Namaste.